so last week on Friday, CrossFit announced that they're going to be changing the games completely from what, our, what we first thought it was going to be. They announced, in essence, they're going to be having another qualifier for the 30 athletes that were supposed to be competing. And from that qualifier, five males and five females will then go to the actual CrossFit Games. Obviously, this caused a lot of confusion. I think for everyone who was now planning to be going to the Games, um, I think the athletes found out a few hours before uh, CrossFit announced it on their website, and in essence, they were just told that you know the Games is no longer happening in the in the style you thought it was, and we're going to be doing an online qualifier. You know, with that obviously came a lot of questions. How are they going to standardize, um, you know, just the place where people are training? You know, it makes a big difference. For example, if, you know, one gym has long straps for rings, one gym has shorter straps. If a transition to a wall ball is longer or shorter. You know, um, people maybe don't see it that um, because we have so much variance in CrossFit, but often competitions are won by one kilo or a few seconds. And you know, sometimes even less than a second, a competition has in essence been decided on. And therefore, if you have longer straps or shorter straps, that changes your cycle speed on a ring muscle up, and that can make a difference. So. These are legitimate concerns that the athletes have. If a fair competition can be done around the world at one time, obviously we've just had the reference of the, the Rogue competition which went online and I think the general consensus is that Rogue did an amazing job. Was it fair? No, not necessarily because you had people like Cara Webb competing in Australia at three, four in the morning whereas obviously the Americans had the advantage because they were competing in normal day times. So I think even though we've seen um, something like the row competition has been done extremely well, it's not necessarily fair amongst all athletes. And this is the big, uh, I think the big concern for a lot of athletes. One thing that CrossFit have announced is that they will honor the pay payments down so you know if an athlete finished 10th in the qualifier they will still get the payout as if they were at the physical games the issues of fairness of competition are you know are still questionable and we haven't necessarily had any further information or answers on that um, I think the feelings from the athletes is obviously mixed you know they're happy that they're obviously getting a chance to compete. For a lot of athletes, it's nice being in their home environment. They can sleep in their own bed. They can train in a gym where, or compete in a gym that they know with friends, family, possibly other athletes around that they may know. However, the majority of athletes prefer a live competition. You know, that's, that's what we're training for, live competitions, to be there, to be with the other people rather than doing something in a, in a closed environment. So, uh, general consensus, obviously, most people would want to be in California competing. However, um, a lot of athletes have accepted that, you know, if this is the way it's going to be, well, we're going to turn this into our best opportunity. Um, in terms of our preparation, so uh, Gabby and myself were planning on, on uh, traveling out to the States. In theory, we had... Um, our visa and permission sorted. We were even supposed to book flights, but we obviously found out the news and so had to cancel everything until we get further information. It does change um, training slightly. We'd started introducing a, a longer training day where we would be running, swimming, longer distances that we typically see at the games. It's very unlikely that we're gonna see a swim or we're gonna see a longer run because it's next to impossible to, uh, to make that fair with, you know, if someone's running up a hill, if someone's swimming in a different pool, all these things make uh, a big difference. So our training will revert back to more of an open style training, which is, you know, in essence what we do more or less throughout the year. We're expecting to have burpees, barbell movements, gymnastic movements on a bar, as that's the most um, easy thing to, to organize. There has been talk of going to a 400 meter track during this uh, qualifier. But again, legitimate questions were raised in the sense that, you know, if one person has rain and wind on a track, 
and another person has perfect conditions, obviously they're a huge disadvantage. Whereas if they're in a live competition, the, those kind of disadvantages would be leveled out because everyone is in the same condition um, conditions. Uh, my personal thoughts are, you know, I, I think it's great for that they're still going to honour the prize money for the athletes. It's a significant amount of money and and for them to do an online, in essence, an online qualifier and be able to win that much, it, it's great for them and can really help them continue their sport. From a, a sport perspective, like fan of the sport and coach, like, you know, I, I also love on-site competitions. It's... it's it's more exciting, it's more what we are used to, what we prepare for. So, you know, I'm obviously sad that we're not going to have the, the games in California or the games of at least 30 people. I'm also a little concerned for the finals. So we saw last year they cut down to 10 athletes. For me personally, I think that it's not as fun to watch when you don't have, say, 20 athletes in the heats. And the reason for this being, even though you might have you know, the best athletes competing, they all have different skills. So one might be a great, have great capacity, such as swimming, and they could finish 10 to 15 minutes ahead of uh, the next person. But if there's no one in between, then the point system just stays the same. You don't get that punished for, for doing badly. Um, and the same thing holds true of lifting. You can get someone who hits big numbers, someone who doesn't, but the person who doesn't doesn't get punished for, uh, for the lighter numbers because there's no one to come in between and mix things up. And what that's likely to mean is that we'll know who's going to be winning from, from the first day because there's going to be no one to come in between and mix up the score system. I don't know if they'll find a way of resolving this, I think it's extremely hard unless you somehow start penalising the winner at certain points to make the final day more interesting. But obviously that's uh, you know, not a great, great way of doing it. Like in golf, obviously people have certain handicaps that so they get like points, but for CrossFit I really don't think that's going to work. And I see, it, I see it a very tough issue to make the games exciting with so few athletes because we're probably going to see that the leaderboard is set almost from day one, dependent on the number of events. So from different perspectives that I'm looking at this, personally, it would be great to see an on-site competition, have the 30 athletes throw down in California together. I think it'd be a good uh, spectacle as well. The new change is maybe not going to be as exciting for fans, uh, so that's kind of disappointing. From an athlete level in terms of the athletes that we're working with you know it's a great opportunity for them it's going to help them hopefully financially for the next year in the sport we will obviously do our best job to support the athletes in this environment we're very lucky in the sense that we have a great setup for for things like this and um, our training is obviously going to change slightly but you know we've been doing this for the last 10 years preparing athletes for the open um, more recently online competitions and so we do have experience in that and our training is going to be reflected to make sure that that our athletes do the the best possible in this online format